Hey guys, Big Dog Beave. Uh, all right, so as promised, here is my video uh, about the smoke test. Uh, wait a second, what's missing here? Something's missing right around this area right here. What is it? Oh, my tech mat is missing. Huh? I wonder what happened to it. Huh? Well, you know what? I found this one. Let's put this one down instead. There you go. Uh, I just took my 1911 mat away and I got a, a, an XDM mat here. So we'll work off of this for a little while. And speaking of the XDM, okay. let's just put this out here for everyone to look at for right now. Still dirty from the match. Uh, haven't, haven't cleaned yet and I will do that as soon as I get the opportunity. Uh, it'll probably be right after this. And we'll talk about the cleaning and getting a final uh, ready for Florida. But in the meantime, we're here to talk about the rounds that I used in the match that you just saw. And we'll use the same ones. Okay, these are already all completed. So there is my plated semi wad cutter, my lead semi wad cutter, and the Molly. Now, I realize and I've been, I found out I've been actually referring to this wrong. Precision Bullets does not use a Molly coating, they use a polymer type coating. So technically this is a polymer bullet. Okay, uh, take a look at this footage. This is from Ontolani. And the first one I'm gonna show you is the lead. Uh, I, this is a, I ran this on the first stages. As you can see, the lead has obviously the most amount of smoke. Um, I don't think that that was really a surprise to anyone. Uh, where the question lies in is uh, where does the molly, or in this case the polymer coating, fit in when it comes to smoke? Okay, here is the uh, one of the stages I ran using strictly the precision bullets, the black bullets, the molly coated bullets, however you want to call them, polymer coated. Okay, as you can see, less smoke. That's the good news. Uh, so basically it is lead has the most, molly or polymer coated has, le has less, and then finally, we'll, here is a stage that I ran, or just a real quick stage, where I used just my plated bullets, as you can see, the least amount of smoke. So if we bring it back here, let's put these in order. Most smoke, less, the least. Okay, now again, let's go over uh, pricing real quick, and I'm blocking the way here, so I apologize for that. Um, okay, so let's get out each of these here. Okay, so here's what we got. This is, a, this is our smoke test right here. Okay, least, less, le uh, excuse me, most, less, least. Okay, now from a price standpoint, most, less, least. Okay. So, I don't really know what I'm trying to prove here, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, a, for me, at least these particular uh, precision bullets, and again, it may be different with a different manufacturer, but for me, from the price point that I had, I had talked about before, where it was about seventy dollars for five hundred, um, I don't see. I still don't see the benefit. That yes, there was less smoke than lead, but they're a lot more expensive than lead. I mean, the lead bullet for five hundred is forty-one to forty-five dollars. Okay, the uh, the plated bullet for five hundred from Extreme Bullets is around fifty-one somewhere in that general area. And the precision bullets were 70. So you're looking at a, a savings of really 30 to 20 to $30. Um, you know, I, I, at this point, I really don't see the benefit. That's not to say I'm still not gonna shoot these, but in my last video, you'll notice I had a lot of feeding issues, okay? Most of my feeding issues came from this bad boy right here. Came from the, the precision bullet. Now, 
the feeding issues I'm experiencing, there are a couple of factors in, in all of this. One of the factors is you've seen my other videos where even the plated semi wad cutter has an issue feeding in the XDM, at least mine. So I worked through a different, bunch of different things today, and uh, you know, the, in that match. And honestly, I don't remember if I used the plated semi wad cutter in any uh, in any of the stages. The last stage where you see the uh, the, the last stage I showed you with the smoke that had the least was actually uh, one of the round nose. Um, mostly because I had it, I already set it up, so I actually used that in that last stage. But the point is that it's the same thing, it's still the same plate of coating. So for me, and I can't believe, I've actually had no feeding issues with lead up until uh, that last match when I actually had some feeding issues like right out of the gate with, uh, with one of those. Now this could also be the fact that it was cold out there. All right, and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I'm recording this the same day. This is still Sunday. I just got home from the match not long ago. My XDM is still freezing cold. I have been home for a couple of hours now in the warmth of my home. This is still cold. Um, so that could have contributed something too. I wasn't the only one experiencing manufacturers on that day. A number of guys were having manufacturing, uh, manufacturing, were having malfunctioning problems with, with primer strikes and, and so, you know, I was not the only one. I think I was the only one really with feeding issues though. That was the, that was the big thing. So, okay, back to the discussion at hand, okay? Most, less, least in smoke, price, most, middle, least. One of the things that I want to do, and I can't wait until the company gets more back in stock, I want to give Bayou bullets a try. They are a molly coated or polymer coated bullet just like these here, but they but they cost about $20 less for 500. So let us let's use the the round nose here for an example. Okay? And from a smoke standpoint, uh, let's do this. Okay? So, and this is from what I've seen, I haven't proved it yet, I haven't experienced it. From what I've seen online, Bayou bullets, the green bullets, um, from a smoke standpoint would probably fit right here and like right up next to that, okay? Like those two are very close. Now from a price standpoint, the Bayou bullets fit right there. Uh, for 500, it's about $50. Okay, these two actually should be, probably be close together. Because this would be 50, this would be 51. Six and one half dozen of the other. Uh, so I really want to give them a try when they finally get some back in stock. I was talking to uh, a guy that I've uh, shot with a number of times. Uh, he is a, oh, what is he? He's a five gun expert. Uh, he shoots Bayou bullets almost exclusively and he loves them. So I definitely want to give them a try. Also, at the same time, I'm going to bump up from using the 200 grain to a 230 grain bullet. Um, I was doing some more research uh, about using more bullet or using heavier bullets and about that uses then less powder to make power factor. It's a whole thing. So I want to I want to think I'm going to step up to the 230s and give those a try as well. In the meantime, my problem is Florida. I shipped 200 rounds of plated semi wad cutters down to Florida and 100 rounds of my uh, round nose. So I think what's going to have to happen is when I get down to Florida, I'm going to use the plated semi wad cutters. I've already got them going. So, and, and I, at this point, I'm not going to do any extra shipping because uh, it's going to cost just too much money. So, and if I, the first day, if I start having problems with the, with the, with the semi-wide cutters, I'll switch over to round nose. Hopefully I'll have enough to finish the match. All right, guys. I uh, appreciate you watching. As always, I will see you next time. Next video we are going to do, uh, I'm going to do a uh, strip and clean of the 525, the XDM. Uh, the reason I'm going to do that is because you saw in the video uh, from IDPA that my I was shooting really low, uh, and I don't know if the sights have gotten uh, uh, discombobulated with the fact that every time you know I have a malfunction, I'm doing this. 
I could be hitting the uh, uh, the site, the rear sight, and if that's the case, it could have it, it could be out of whack. So basically, what is going to happen here is I am going to clean my XDM and then take it to the range, and I'm going to fire uh, some rounds through it, get the sight redialed back in, make sure I'm, I'm, I'm right on, and then just go to Florida like that. Uh, the, what I've been, what what's, I've understood is that, you know, you don't want to start a competition with a clean gun. A lot of guys start with dirty guns, I don't think it makes a difference, but you know what, it doesn't hurt to, to give this thing a good cleaning, and then run a few rounds down it just to kind of get it uh, going again. So that being said, all right, guys, uh, as always, I will see you next time, and thanks for watching.